scams. It starts to connect into the UFO cover-up. It starts to connect into government manipulation and manipulation of wars, the suppression of knowledge about the nature of reality. And, and, and you start to realize that this is not a, uh, a series of conspiracies. Uh, it's one conspiracy. And this is one of the things that, that, that skeptics say. And good luck to them. They have a right to be skeptical, although it's interesting that People say people need to be skeptical. No, they don't. People need to question. What a skeptic does is not question, but starts from a premise that what they believe at that time is true. So anything that uh, challenges that belief system must therefore not be true. And if I'm going to preserve my belief system to myself, then I have to demolish uh, 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 and dis get dismissed and ridicule those people that are uh, presenting a version of reality in the world that is different to mine. That's basically what the skeptic society is doing. They're frightened little people, terror, terrified that actually what they believe might not be true. So it's like it's a version of shut up, don't want to hear it. Um, but when you um, you look at uh, this with an open mind and uh, you see the connections, you realize that unlike what skeptics say, which is you see conspiracies everywhere. There's a conspiracy here, there's a conspiracy there, there's a conspiracy there, you see conspiracies <laughs> everywhere. No, no. No, no. No, no, mate. There's one conspiracy to enslave humanity in a centralized global um, Orwellian state with a microchip population and total control and surveillance 24-7 and all these different conspiracies are actually different masks on this one face and they all connect into it. Uh, and uh, so I've met so many people um, over the years that have come into this whole understanding of the connections from a specific subject that they started out with. I, I think you hit it right on the, uh, the nail on the head with saying it's all one conspiracy. And instead of trying to say, well, there's 500 different conspiracies and they all, you know, lead in one direction, but it's actually quite, quite the reverse. And, and you're and you're excellent at at getting out there and putting that information out so that people can connect and connect up and start realizing this is happening. Well, and of course, what we try to do is to make the connection of uh, how the information can not just be a piece of bad news, but something that can actually empower them. And so, the question is, you know, what what's the strategy for co for coping with the information and actually turning it around, using it. And um, you know, getting back on top of it, dehypnotizing or de disindoctrinating yourself. Well, well, that's the point, really. And and I, uh, I, I, I differ greatly from some areas of what are called the new age. I mean, the number of people who've said to me over the years, not so much now, mind, but but years ago, it's all negative what you're saying, and you mustn't say it because you must only say positive things. Well, negative, positive. We've created a polarity already, a duality. But the the, the thing is that. Uh, the question needs to be asked if we really want to uh, have a, a, a spiritual awakening, which is happening anyway because there's vibrational change, but on the level I'm talking about, then we must remove the resistance the calcul and expose the calculated resistance to that awakening because these things go side by side. Yes, people need to um, open their minds to, to the full nature of infinite consciousness that we are but on the on the other hand we also need to address the uh, systematic structure that's been set up in our uh, human society to stop that awakening happening because the more we expose that and the more we um, dismantle that the more and faster people are going to be awakening because you're, t you're you're reducing the power of the resistance to that awakening the manipulation of perception, the uh, destabilization of what I call the body computer through uh, food additives and uh, additives to water and drink, the electromagnetic uh, microwave uh, soup that we live in in the cities now and, 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 and all, all that's going on on that level. So, and, and the uh, suppression of scientific knowledge about the fact that everything's connected and we're all one consciousness and this is just a virtual reality we're, having, we're experiencing at this time. All these things are keeping people in the box and stopping them awakening. So the awakening and the exposure of that which is seeking to suppress the awakening, these two have to go side by side, not either 
or, but both together. And it seems that uh, a lot of people seem to be using, oh, that's negative, as an excuse to keep their head down and not have to get, symbolically, their hands dirty, um, addressing this control system as well as talking this, the spiritual um, way too. And I, I think that um, a lot of uh, people are in denial of, of, of how the world is manipulated and controlled because, frankly, they don't want to face the plight that we're in um, and therefore have to address it. It's like, I don't want this to be true, so I'm going to kid myself that it isn't. Well, I'm not going to say that I'm New Age. I was looking at it. And, and what, and what yeah. it really came out to mean to me, because that exactly what you're saying is, is I was having a hard time trying to argue or, uh, defend the fact that you have to look at some of the ugly factors that are going on out there in the world and to address them. And yet, at the same time, yeah, they're right in a certain respect that that uh, if you uh, deal with negative, you're going to attract negative, or you deal with positive, you attract positive. But there's something else going on there, and I think you're addressing it in what you're saying. Well, well this is what I feel. You know, if you ignore something, then what you're ignoring goes on unchallenged, and uh, we have been through very distinct stages in this um, uh, that I've seen anyway over the last 20 years. The first one was that um, people who were putting this information out, when I started, very, very few, um, they were dismissed and ridiculed and all the rest of it. And then particularly the turn of the 21st century, particularly after 9-11 and with all the Iraq stuff, people started to open their minds to the fact that actually maybe uh, they were being lied to on a, a much bigger scale than they thought before. And, and people started to open their minds to the fact the world was like they thought it was. What I'm now beginning to see, we're at this cusp of stage three, which is when that awakening awareness is starting to impact on events. And my goodness, is that going to go on now in the next few years? Um, and, and so it's a very exciting time to be around. But if, if we have to face what we are facing. Otherwise, nothing changes. You know, it's like um, I, I've said in my, my new book, um, when your head's in the sand, you have to be on your knees. Uh, and, and people think that if they put their head in the sand, well, they can just carry on and that it, everything will be fine and they don't have to face what's going on. But the, the, their backside's still in the air and the tornado's still <laughs> coming. Now, if you, <laughs> if you lift your head out of the sand, you can turn round face the situation, a tornado is coming, and you can take avoiding action. That is a positive thing. You're empowering yourself to influence in, in a very, very positive way. Keep using this word positive, negative, all that stuff, and much more, uh, uh, much more to this than that. But you can, you can um, take avoiding action and, and influence your own experience and life. But if you keep your head in that sand, then eventually, although ignorance is bliss only for a while, your backside and that uh, um, tornado are going to make contact. Uh, and this is why we need to... It's like, it's like in the, uh, the days of the Nazis and stuff. Do nothing, do nothing. Oh, it's not my problem. Oh, they're taking the Jews. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, they're taking the, uh, the communists. It doesn't matter. They're taking the, the disabled. It doesn't matter. Because I'm none of those things. Okay. And then eventually um, something goes on your front door late at night and you go... Oh dear, who can that be this late? You know, and suddenly the reality is now your reality. But who, who's around now to talk for you? No one, be, because they've all been taken out before while you were looking the other way and saying, well, it's not my problem. So we okay. have to come together here and make sure that everybody's problem is everybody's problem. Right, Dan. So from a more practical, personal perspective, how about if you tell what you have done, uh, perhaps nutritionally, um, in some of the books you mentioned, some of your health uh, pursuits and how that has helped you, and and also as far as avoiding um, this soup of microwaves and, and other energies in a physical sense, um, and and what you feel that has done as far as um, you know, how, how does that figure into your uh, ability to see clear clearer? Uh, and, and do you feel like where you are now in, in Britain uh, is, is a place that you get the kind of um, 
you know, lower level of, I mean, aren't you probably surrounded as much as anyone over there? What do you do in order to handle that? Oh, yeah. On, 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 on this little island we're, uh, of the British Isles, we're, um, we're really bombarded by all this stuff because we, we have a massive population compared to the, to the amount of land. There's still lots of open space, uh, but uh, compared with most countries, uh, not that much. It's very um, urban across great swathes of this uh, country. But there's a few things that come out of that. Um, Again, I, I talked a few minutes ago about different stages, and there's different stages in this, uh, in the sense that you can, you can first of all realize on one level, because there's multi levels of awareness, therefore multi levels of experienced reality, um, you can realize that filling your body with toxic things and what have you. Is, is not good and it can um, affect you mentally, emotionally and physically. Uh, but as you expand your consciousness, and this is where we're going, uh, you go beyond a vibrational connection with that level of experience to the point where basically you can eat what you like and you'll be fine. Uh, th this is the, where we're going. I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a guy, uh, uh, an, an, an academic in America, story I read a few times, who was doing experiments into LSD in the 60s. And one of the things he did was go out east and gave LSD to people and, and, and monitored their behavior and their reaction. And then there were people who, these kind of mystic people, um, who he gave it to and nothing happened and then he increased the dose to heroic doses they should have been uh, on another planet somewhere in another universe and they just smiled at him um, because their their consciousness was more powerful than the drug that they were being given and I talked to people in who were in government mind control programs in America where they compartmentalize the mind into different uh, self-contained units, which they call alters, who were in a drug state in one alter, one personality uh, kind of um, mind box, mind prison, within the honeycomb of their mind that these programs create. And when they came out, they were switched out of that um, part of their mind that had experienced taking the drug into another part of the mind that, were, that had not, the effect of the drug disappeared immediately. I've talked to people who have been drunk in one compartment of their mind and when they're switched to another through hypnotic keys, etc., they're stone cold sober immediately. That's interesting. And, I mean, a number, <laughs> another, a number of them have said to me, when we had operations, we were terrified but in the middle of the operation, we, we wouldn't switch to another altar because we would have woke up. The anesthetic would have had no effect. Um, and, and so the power of m the mind, and particularly the power of consciousness, a word I use for the higher levels of awareness, beyond mind and beyond body, um, they have the ability, once they're freed from their programming and their preconceived idea, um, that they can overcome anything. You see, when you, when you have people walking through fire and not getting burned, how, how can that happen? I mean, we're physical beings, so we're told, so therefore your feet must burn into contact with the fire and the coals. But once you go into a different state of awareness, a different state of consciousness, you can walk through uh, those uh, coals and not get burned. Why? Because an illusion can only burn an illusion if you think it can. You know, and... and, and we are put into lower levels of awareness systematically the way that society is structured, the way that we're programmed from cradle to grave through the various means of education and media and all the rest of it. Um, we are put in such a low level of consciousness that we are experiencing uh, a cause and effect of if you eat this, then this will be the reaction. If you drink this, this will be the reaction. But when you go into higher levels of awareness beyond that, then that cause and effect doesn't happen in the same way. The consciousness is too powerful for whatever you are uh, eating or drinking. So that's where we're going. And, and in the same way, by the way, um, I've been saying for years that what we call alternative healing, 
whether it's uh, acupuncture, reflexology, whatever it is, that's not the end. That's the stepping stone. The, 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 the start, well, at least in, in, in the modern times, not before, but the start in modern times was the Rockefeller family created uh, scalpel and drug medical system, which it imposed on the world with, with, um, under orders from the Rothschild dynasty. So all the way through, it's scalpel or drug. There's something wrong with me, scalpel or drug, something wrong with me, scalpel or drug. Um, oh, I've got a problem with my, 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 my mind, my emotions. Ah, drug. Ne then we started to, to reach this point where more and more people, and of course it's exploding now, started to look at alternative ways to the scalpel and the drug. Um, but where we're we going as this awakening uh, and this breakdown of the, the, the mind prisons goes on is the point where we're going to heal ourselves through uh, our own power of consciousness. That's where we're going. And uh, it's uh, an incredibly exciting time, but a, a very, very challenging one because as this awakening uh, happens, of course, the control system is desperately trying to keep the lid on it. Uh, the first book I ever wrote in these subjects when I had my awakening 20 years ago was actually called Truth Vibrations. Uh, because I learned uh, 20 years ago through various uh, means um, that a vibrational change was coming that was going to A, act like a spiritual alarm clock to wake people up from their amnesia, which is what we've been put into, and B, was going to bring all that's been hidden to the surface where people could see it. Now, 20 years ago, there was no evidence of either. Uh, 20 years later, my goodness, there it is. What we're seeing are these truth vibrations teasing open this density of, of, that we've been uh, manipulated into by fear and guilt and frustration and uh, all the rest of it. Um, and also, at the same time, these truth vibrations are bringing to the surface all the stuff that's been hidden and saying to people, look what's been going on while you've been asleep. And so... Um, you know, we're in a wonderful, wonderful period of, of human experience. Very challenging, but ultimately, this world is going to change dramatically for the better in my lifetime. Now, is this what you get into in your new book? Oh, in great detail. I mean, because it's 714 pages long, um, it's an enormous work of dot connecting so it, it goes across the great spectrum of subjects and fits them together and when you do you go it's actually the world is so complex but actually it's really quite simple when you see the structure and this this the whole area of the awakening the truth vibrations oh yes i go into it big time because it's happening i've i've experienced it I, I, over the last 20 years i've seen it happen before my eyes i've been to 50 countries researching this it's happening everywhere everywhere not the majority yet, but my goodness, is it expanding by the day. Well, as you do your travels, and, you know, because people tend to look at those who've gone ahead a little and whose research definitely is far in front of their own, they must be asking you, and you must see people in various stages of their own transition. So, what, I mean, what, what is the answer when someone's asking, well, what's the first step? You know, I'm basically a, a very standard American. You know, I, I watch TV a lot. I eat the standard American diet. Or, you know, not necessarily American, but, you know, if, if they're very caught up in their own body computer and they're not really developing the consciousness that you describe but are very much being led along um, with mind programs, as you say, I mean, what, what have you found is the most, I mean, surely it varies with everybody, and I know in your books you say it's not all about you, and, and yet, the, you know, the curiosity is for sure there. What do you find for yourself and in those that you give a little advice to is, is the most important first steps. I mean, is it is it not nutrition? Is it more of, of just meditation or? I think it's intent. Um, you see, all genius is simple. Uh, there is no genius in complexity. If it seems complex, then you've not got to the core of what's going on because all genius sees the simple in the complex and in terms of creation and consciousness you're looking at the ultimate genius so therefore in its basic form it must be dead simple um, and what happens is that we think that to overcome something or to do something or achieve something it has to be complex no no it has to be simple because it's genius and it's it's very much like the um, the scene in the first Matrix movie where they're in the room. Do you want the blue pill or the red pill? The, fir the first point is 
intent. And not an intellectual intent. Oh yeah, I'd like to wake up and know what's going on in the world and change my life. <laughs> and, and that's it. No, it's, a, it's, it's an intent that is your being. I want to know. I want to be what I really am. I want to wake up to my true nature and the true nature of reality and I will follow any path necessary to do that. End of story. Now what you've done, because we are projecting an, an, an energy field, electromagnetic energy field, which is a, a vibrational waveform information construct, if you like, which carries our state of being at any one time. And therefore, that will, through a process I call vibrational magnetism, it will attract to you um, other energy fields that connect with what you're putting out. This is why um, you will create your partners, your relationships of various kinds, your jobs, your opportunities or lack of them, um, your location. You're all creating this by what you're putting out because everything is a vibrational field. Um, therefore, your location is a vibrational field, your partner is a vibrational field, etc. And you, you draw towards you a reflection of you. When you talk... In the people in the people, places and ways of life that you attract. Just, just very, very quickly, so when you project this intent, I want to change, what happens immediately if you mean it rather than just say it, there is a tremendous shift in your energetic state. Now what that starts to do immediately, um, or very quickly anyway, I experience it, so many people do, now you're putting out a different vibrational field and, and those in your life, whether it's locations, whether it's jobs, partners, relationships of all kinds, family even, that are not syncing with your new energetic state, they will in your play out holographic everyday so-called physical experience start to drift out of your life in many ways. Other people, locations, opportunities, jobs, what have you will come in. And, and, and what tends to um, happen at this point is people perceive this in the experienced level, the holographic level, as, oh, my life's falling apart. Oh, my goodness, what's happening to my life? I, my, I, I went through this massively and in public in Britain, and it was a real challenge. But wh what you realize is that, hey, what are you moaning about? Because you, you wanted to transform, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, how can you transform if you stay as you were? And, and for the new to come in, the old has to go, and we experience this as, the, as our lives falling apart. If through the experience of others who've gone before in the terms of the experience, uh, people can, 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 can go through it in the knowledge that, hey, it's a challenge and I don't like it, but I know it's necessary to get where I want to be, then it's a lot easier to get through than, than for people like me who, who 20 years ago when I'm going, what on earth is going on in my life? Uh, my whole life's falling apart. One day I'm a respected television presenter with the BBC, the next everyone's laughing at me in the street. Um, but when I look back at that period of, uh, of experience, challenging and nightmare as it was when I experienced it, I, I say thank you because it, uh, it, it set me free. It set me free of so much. And, and um, so it's the intent. That's the first thing. Second thing is, to keep with it when things aren't very pleasant because so many people they say I want to do this and they mean it up to a, a, a point and then their life starts to fall apart and they go oh if that's spirituality you can stick it I don't want anything to do with this this is no fun and they go back to the old life and, 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 and everything stops if you keep with it eventually you're going, to, you're going to come through and go, wow, I'm so glad I did that. Well, a lot of you people like you or Alex Jones and that sort uh, uh, get accused of being fear mongers and that sort. And actually, that's not what you guys are doing or, at, at all because you don't, you're not fearing it and, 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 a, and exposing it. And the ones that are in fear are the ones that are accusing you of that, correct? You are, you are so right. You know, I, the number of people... I hear say we've got to let go of fear and then they say you're frightening people well hold on a second I thought we were letting go of fear here you know information awareness knowledge is never negative 
ignorance is negative because that's what puts you in the box and allows you to be controlled by the few. And, and, and you know, it, again, everything is a choice. Everything is a point of perception. I look at all this information coming out, some of it very, very unpleasant in terms of what's been going on in the world, and I go, hallelujah, brother and sister. I mean, it's coming out. We're seeing it now. What a great time. The, the hidden is no longer having the power over us that it had before because it's increasingly no longer hidden. Great. This is part of the awakening, fundamentally part of the awakening. And, 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 and to, um, to, to say it's negative and you're frightening people, well, uh, th that's a, a, re a reflection of the person saying it. You're absolutely right, Melody, uh, and not, not the person doing it. I'm not frightened of this stuff. Not at all. All the consequences. Well, I, I think it. that's reflected a lot, and just and you watch all the the uh, laws and that sort, and and, and uh, things that are written about, and you keep uncovering more and more ugly things, and you get to the point when you realize, you know, how can you top that ugly, and and you, then you finally have to realize, well, you know, you you become numb to it to a point, and realize that you know, okay, now what am I going to do about it? Yeah, you, what what you've got to people have have, have got to realize is that. You know, if, if you sit cross-legged on the mountain above everything, then that's okay for a while. But what all this stuff still going on? And the real, if not, I don't like the word warrior, but the real spiritually committed people, spiritually being, you know, I, I, I want to come from a point of view of consciousness and not just mind body. They're the ones that go down into the dark places. They're the ones that go down into the dark places because um, by doing that, you, you are making vibrational connections to, to these energies of control, these energies of suppression, and, and then you can, you, can, you can break that vibration like a, like a walking, talking rife machine. People, most people will know what I mean by that. A rife machine where it tunes into the frequency of an illness or a, a, a health problem and breaks the frequency and therefore um, the health problem disappears because the basis of, of its very existence, its vibrational state, is gone. And, and, and it's not about running away from things that we don't like and, and, and situations that we'd rather not be happening. It's actually running straight at them and, uh, and dealing with them rather than uh, running away or acting as if they don't exist. You know, there's so many. See, the people have, there's a difference between simple and simplistic. And, and I see so many people have a simplistic view of the way things are, like good and bad, uh, good and evil, light and dark. I mean, there are shades of gray here. There's not, it's not black and white. One of the largest life forms on Earth is mycelium, and I was watching this in a Paul Stamets video, and I realized that, that when we, you were looking at this mycelium under a, an electron microscope, it looked very much like the neurons of the brain. And I'm just kind of wondering if the universal mind is somewhat like that. It's just a matter of we're having an opportunity now to make those connections. Well, it has to be. I mean, again, every, everything's very simple when you l get through the complexity. I love that. Um, we, I mean, that, we live in a hollow... <laughs> of being, I mean, it gives you some responsibility. Like, you're a neuron or you're a dendrite connection. Do your job because you're part of this, this universal whole. Well, yeah, I mean, this virtual reality universe, and increasingly even some mainstream scientists are realizing this, is um, a hologram. It's, it's all holographic. And holograms, of course, have the illusory uh, appearance of three-dimensionality. When they're not, what, 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 what it is, it's waveform. If you look at um, the photographic print of a holographic uh, photograph, whatever, it's waveform. It looks like a fingerprint. And then when they fire the laser at the, um, the waveform, suddenly, miraculously, it seems, a apparently three-dimensional form is created and uh, the even holograms that humans make never mind the level of sophistication or advancement of the holographic universe um, uh, look can look as solid as you and me um, and and they're now making digital holograms um, and they're using them at uh, conferences and stuff and uh, exhibitions and, and I've been reading some articles about this people are frightened to walk through these uh, digital holograms because they, they think they're solid uh, but but they're not it's all I I illusion and the great, um, in fact, I, I was coming through Heathrow Airport about a year ago. I've been writing about this holographic stuff for ages. 
and the front p uh, cover of a magazine called New Scientist, which is an absolutely right in the center of mainstream scientific magazine in this country, had a front page uh, feature headline which says, you are a hologram projected from the edge of the universe. And I'm thinking, whoa, we're, 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 we're moving on here. But the, what I'm going with this is um, one of the great characteristics of a hologram is that every part of the hologram is a smaller version of the whole. So if you get the holographic uh, um, waveform print and you cut it into four and you fire the laser at each quarter, you don't get a quarter of the whole picture. You get a quarter-sized version of the whole picture. So um, everything is a smaller version of the whole because of the way holograms work, all information is encoded everywhere. And so this is where you get um, the alternative methods of healing, like to an extent acupuncture, which can find uh, points in the ear and other parts of the body which relate and can affect all the different organs of the body. This is where reflexology comes from, where you can find places on the hands, the feet, and all over the body, where um, uh, from that uh, point you can affect the whole body or different parts of the body, like the heart or the lungs or whatever. It's because the body's a hologram. Now, if you take this forward up the other level, if we are holographic, I'm not saying we are holographic uh, in terms of our eternal self, but this reality, this body computer is holographic, therefore, we must be a smaller part of the whole, just as smaller parts of our body are a smaller part of our, uh, our whole. So therefore, if you keep going up, the human form and, and all these different, the, the, uh, the animal form, the, 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 the form of trees, the form of the planets, the form of the solar system, right up to the, what I call the super hologram, which is the universe as a whole, every part within that super hologram must uh, be a reflection in information terms and, and, and even more deeper levels of the, the, the super hologram. Um, therefore, the, the body, the brain, must be a smaller part of the whole. So what you're saying make, is perfectly uh, l l uh, logical when you come from that understanding. So ultimately, I mean, what I've been finding is when everybody is given a lot of, I mean, giving the same facts and, and giving it, you know, without trying to uh, hold things out, I've been amazed at how much we... We, how centrist we are when we come to the, our conclusions. So in, in, so in an essence, when they break us apart in these uh, boxes, as, as you say, to keep us thinking differently, when, uh, and in reality, you know, when we, we're, we're connected, we're going to think pretty much close, close in uh, thought, correct? Well, we, we, are, um, we are all consciousness. Everyone is all consciousness. We are, we are all different points of observation, different points of focus and awareness within the ocean. The conspiracy is designed to make us live our lives and perceive ourselves in the world as a disconnected droplet, not the ocean. Okay. Um, and and, and, and as, therefore, as we open our minds, we open the droplet and access the ocean, then all possibility becomes available to us. And, and as, we, um, as we go through this, people do absolutely start to see things in the same way because they're accessing the same uh, information uh, uh, levels. And the more they open their mind, the higher the levels of information, awareness, knowledge, ability to love and perceive uh, uh, expands. And uh, the whole thing m moves forward. But... Yes, I mean, as people open their minds, they start to see the world in very similar ways, you, often using different language, but they're coming from the same point of view, they're, they're. because they're now accessing the same level of awareness and same level of consciousness. But, but let's dissect this just a little, because when, when you say, Melody, that we have sort of a centrist viewpoint, I think it has to do with sort of like a common pool of ideas, where I think that, David, what you're getting at now is that people actually, as they leave that common pool, are converging on some very similar ideas. Um, and, I, and I wonder, I mean, you are often referencing the limits of language as you continue this discussion. And I feel yeah. that that is a very hidden thing. And that when, well, when, when I, I you think talk language, about language itself, actually. Yeah, well... well language it, itself. To, to represent 
your infinite possibilities as you come upon them and leave behind the centrist pool of ideas, that that's the challenge because you're really given the same language pool. And so sort of reinventing language, abusing it, you know, doing something with it that's uh, not uh, triggering the same old thought reactions in other people's minds, even though you're trying to to do something new with it. I, I, would, I would say go beyond it because... It, it's my view um, that uh, language was introduced to uh, divide us and to bring us into five sense reality. You see, um, once upon a time, we used to communicate telepathically. And, and by that, I don't mean um, I'm getting something. Did you say, so? I'm, I'm kind of getting, did you say this? Not that level of, uh, of telepathy. I mean when we're reading each other's thoughts in a way that is just as clear as what we call language today. But what does that do? When, when, when you are inter interacting and communicating on an energetic thought, mind, consciousness level, what does that do? It holds you in a certain level of consciousness because that's what you're communicating on. That's the, uh, the wavelength you're operating on. Once you pull people into uh, communicating through language. What is language? Uh, it's a vibration that, that connects into what? The five senses. Um, and, and it pulls you in. And uh, I think this universal story, I mean, it's a biblical story, but you find the same story wherever you go around the world using different names and situations of um, God, actually the gods, scrambling language, and therefore, you know, keeping people apart and all the rest of it. There's, there's a fundamental um, uh, truth in that. And uh, where, where I think we're, we're beginning to move is more and more communicating on a, on a deeper level, not yet on the level and not for some time where we're communicating in that telepathic way that, that I've just talked about, but we are feeling more and more rather than hearing or thinking and, and what I mean by that is uh, when uh, I, I, I do these talks around the world these eight hour talks and the number of psychic people in the audiences over the years who said to me you know why you were talking now I'm not I'm completely unaware of this I, I feel the energy around around the theater but but I, I'm completely unaware of this in the sense that these psychics could see it while I'm talking there is an energetic connection between me and the audience and the audience and me. It's an interaction which is happening on an energetic level that, that is what, it beyond the voice and ear. Um, and and th 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 these levels of communication are starting to, to um, impose themselves more and more. It's a level where <clears throat> you don't just think it or work it out. That's what the mind and voice and all the rest of it does. It's where you just know it's a knowing, it's intuition, it's, it's an energetic connection where words are virtually superfluous because, yeah, I got it, I feel it, I, I, I got it, I intuitively know it. And these are the levels that are now being, as, as people awaken, that these closed uh, sensitivities that are starting to manifest themselves again. People are becoming more and more intuitive because they're starting to understand that we're not just uh, five sense so-called physical beings and and in, with that awareness these sensitivities that have been suppressed are now opening up again and um, that's where the real communication is taking place between people you know I, th I think we're born with this what you're talking about and it's really yeah. highly discouraged and we have to reconnect exactly exactly and it's happening it's happening um, and uh, I, you know I, I've seen it happening uh, all over the world and of course once upon a time again, um, this was encouraged in the ancient societies, uh, but, but more and more as this control system has kicked in, of course it doesn't want people communicating uh, on this level that they can't control, they, they want them com communicating purely voice to ear, which is a level that they can understand and they can control and manipulate. Well, I, I kind of get the feeling that some that they're they're kind of revealing their Achilles heel by the the more that they struggle to try to control us, the more we if we start looking at it, they have just uh, exposed themselves more and more in the avenues that that uh, they fear the most. Are you? Well, well, yeah. Th this is a very important area because 
all this stuff you were talking about earlier, Melody, about fear and, 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 and what have you, in fact, um, the control system does not have the power of humanity that, that humanity thinks it does, or it thinks it has, because it's a house of cards, really. It's a house of cards that is based on us staying in a comatose state and perceiving and filtering and experiencing life through the five senses overwhelmingly. And once uh, th th these guys that in the control system who, who understand this, not the gophers and the, and, the, and the, you know, followers, but the people at the core, which is not that many, uh, they, uh, who understand this, they are terrified of humanity awakening. They really are because they realize that um, we have such infinite potential once we get out of mind and into consciousness and the control system falls uh, as a result. And I've been saying for years that the, 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 the relationship between those, those who are controlling and manipulating and those being manipulated is not one is all-powerful and omnipotent and the other is not. It's that the control system has simply manipulated humanity by the way it's structured society and programmed uh, humanity's sense of self in the world. It's put humanity, the target population, in a smaller box of perception and awareness than it's in. But it's in a box. You can't, you can't not be in a very small box when you are so frightened uh, that you, you feel the need to control everybody and control everything. Uh, awake um, uh, people in their true power and their true um, infinite state, they don't want to control everybody. They don't want to control anybody. Frightened people want to control uh, events and other people because they're frightened of not being in control. I mean, you know, all the things we talk about in terms of humanity, then the control system is, is a reflection of that, or humanity is a reflection of the control system. So um, once we start to awaken to our true sense, then we go way beyond the box that the control system's in, and therefore the control system must lose its power. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of synchrony there in the whole discussion of a smaller box. When you think of Nelson Mandela or other people who have been inside, I mean, I personally have been privileged to see the inside of a jail here in Colorado, and I was astounded to see how much more mentally free a lot of the prisoners, unquote, were than, than the guards themselves, full of so much fear. And once you take, uh, maybe you've experienced this as, as part of the, uh, you know, public uh, onslaught you got when you first, you know, in Britain were getting so much heat for what you were saying. Yeah. Once you lose what you think is, you know, kind of your prestige or, you know, your, your physical freedom to wander about, you really appreciate the freedom that you have mentally to choose your thoughts. Yeah. What's, that, what's that great line in that song, uh, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, th this is a very, a very important uh, area you brought up because attachment is one of the great forms of control because, uh, or, and indeed self-suppression. It's, it's okay um, having relationships and it's okay having things and, and possessions um, as long as they, the situation serves your freedom. But once you become so attached to something, um, I mean, some of the most fearful people I've ever met have been some of the richest because they've got so much money that they've got so much fear of losing it. Um, and, and you think you've got all that money and you, you fret every day about not having it. Um, what is it giving you except it's controlling you? It, it's it's uh, put you in, a, in, in, in your own prison, which is fear of losing your money. Uh, fear of losing your partner, fear of this, fear of that, fear of the future. Uh, all these things um, are attachments which stop you expressing your true self. And, you know, I, I, I this phrase I repeat so often these days to myself in my own life, it is what it is. It is what it is. And if I can change what is, because I want to change what is, then can I do it now? No, I can't. So I have to accept what is until I can. Um, and And... It, it, it means that you you don't get attached to outcomes, which is another form of uh, serious attachment, where you decide at point A that this is what you want to happen. What you've done immediately is uh, set yourself up for disappointment, because unless that thing, that single thing that you say you want to happen, happens, you're disappointed. It's like going to a, a football match, and you desperately want one team to win. Unless that happens, you're going home disappointed. But if you go to the football match and all you want to do is enjoy the game, 
enjoy life uh, symbolically, then whether it's win for your team or win for the other team or a draw or whatever, you've had a good day because you weren't attached to the outcome. And, and you know, f the way I live my life is I do what I believe to be right the next time I decide an action. But I can tell you that um, I have no outcome in mind, not for the world, not for myself, but because the outcome collectively and individually will be decided by the series of decisions and actions I take and others take in the now, in the only moment that exists. And the future, what we call the future, will take care of the outcome, will take care of itself on the basis of what we keep doing um, in our ev everyday lives all the time. And I'm happy with, uh, you know, the outcome is the outcome. Um, uh, I'm not attached to, to, to what it is. I'm what? just attached, atta not attached, but I'm just, I'm just determined to do um, what I feel is right in the moment and then the next moment and the next moment. I think I, I, I believe I heard it in one of your prior interviews, something to the effect if you don't speak your truth or the more you speak your truth, the more that, that becomes your reality. Uh, does that ring true to familiar with what something said in one of your prior interviews? Because, I mean, it really struck me because a lot of us seem to hold back in speaking our truth. But once it seems like the more I've gotten used to speaking my truth, the more it has become easier for me to say it, particularly in, a, in, an, in an environment that might be a little bit contrary to my thoughts. But don't you think it's like you, at first you sort of speak your truth and you have a little tension of like, oh, what are they going to say? Or, and maybe you run away. <laughs> and then the next time you speak your truth and you, and you stay there, and then you're like, oh, you know, no one really smacked me so hard and then next time you speak your truth and you just stare someone right in the eye and you laugh you know yeah uh, it's um it's about uh, it's a whole process of deprogramming you're talking about because i reckon um that if you ask most people in the world give me your top three or your top five biggest fears one of them would be speaking in public and the reason for that is people live in a tiny prison called fear of what other people think. And when you do that, you are no longer your true self. You are living your life, speaking your words, having your views or, or not having them on the basis of what other people's belief systems uh, say. In other words, you're going through this process of what will this person say or do if I say this, which I really believe? So what you're saying is I'm going to suppress myself to within the belief system of the person I'm talking to because I fear their reaction. And the reason that people are uh, overwhelmingly frightened of speaking in public is because the audience is controlling them because they are speaking and, say, and thinking, oh, my goodness, um, what will the audience think? And they're looking around thinking, oh, oh, you know, are they attentive? Are they not? Are, are they are they laughing where they should? Or, or are they look, thinking I'm stupid? You know, are they looking around and looking at their watches and all this stuff? Um, and, and what you're doing is allowing the audience to control your state of being, to uh, control what you say, what you don't say, how you feel about yourself. Once you let go of that fear of what other people think and I, I seems a strange word fortunate but the massive ridicule I went through in Britain in the early 1990s I mean it was colossal um, it actually set me free of the fear of what other people thought because you know they think I'm crazy anyway they think I'm all this <laughs> anyway so I'm just gonna be me and if they don't like it well you can do the other thing that's why I wrote a book at the time called I am me I am free uh, and, and when you do that, you can stand up in front of a hundred people or a hundred thousand people and it doesn't matter because you're speaking your truth, which is your right, and the audience has the right to react to what you're saying in the way that it sees fit because it has the, the, the right to express its uniqueness in the way it reacts to what you're saying. And, 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 and therefore, um, when you speak your truth without fear of what other people think, you free yourself of um, 
editing what you say, editing your view, editing your lifestyle, and you express who you are and not what other people uh, say you must be. So has your intent changed any from when you started out to what you're trying to accomplish now? Although it, I don't know, I, I, it, it, it's apparent that you have you have just a tremendous schedule that you keep. Well, well this is my life, you know. I mean, pe- pe- I, I, I work uh, like uh, twelve-hour days and, and uh, write books and articles and the website, and then I go traveling and talking um, for about four or five months of the year at least. Um, and, and people say, oh, you, 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 you want to have something else in your life, mate. You know, it's not all work. And I'm thinking, what? This is my <laughs> life. Um, it's right. what I'm here to do. I mean, I, I you know, do I want to sit on a beach, chill out? And I don't want to. Right. I, want, I want to find out more than I know an hour ago. Uh, and, 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 and so, um, you know, I, um, I love my life because I, I'm doing what I want to do. And uh, I, in terms of my intent, no, it's not changed. What has changed is my understanding of things, um, which has increased over, over, over 20 years. If it hasn't, what have I been doing? Um, and the more uh, detail that I understand. But uh, my intent is simply to understand who am I, where am I, what are we doing here, what are the forces that control our, 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 uh, our lives and experience and what can we do to take the power back for ourselves uh, now, and, and break that control system? That, that's been my intent for 20 years still is. But have you found the answers there? Well, more and more answers, yeah. I mean, to be honest, Melody, um, <laughs> uh, this book that's now at the printers, um, when it comes out in April or May, um, it's going to have... Um, quite an impact in many ways because I've taken another step forward in my understanding of how this control system works and where it's coming from and who's doing it and how they manipulate reality and um, there's going to be many people in the conspiracy research arena who are going to th- say the, the guy's crazy and that's ridiculous there's going to be people in the system who are going to say uh, uh, condemnatory things and there are going to be other people who are going to say, oh my goodness, that makes so much sense of the world we live in. Um, so um, it's, uh, I've reached a point now where I've just, if you like, stepped across another Rubicon to another level of understanding. Not because I'm a genius or, or, or more special than anyone else, but 20 years ago, I was contacted through a psychic um, by some level of consciousness um, and told that I was going to go out and do this. When I was presenting sport for the BBC at the time, and I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I'm going to go out and do this. Because I'm not. Uh, But it's all happened. And this uh, consciousness, if you like, speaks to me through uh, intuition and knowing and through a synchronistic uh, series of events that put me in a certain place to see or come across information. And I've learned over the years uh, to uh, see when a certain sequence of events is saying, hey, look at this, look at this. And uh, over the last uh, six months, um, I've been on this this journey of incredible synchronicity and um, experience that has led me to understand another stage of this and it is extraordinary i can tell you it's extraordinary but it uh, it makes so much sense of what's going on and the name uh, it, well, the, book? the book is the book is called um human race get off your knees um which is what we need to do now like i said earlier you know if your head's in the sand you must be on your knees and humanity has spent far too long on its knees with its hands clasped together looking up we need to get on our feet and we need to look life and everyone else in the eye because we are all expressions of the same consciousness, none greater or lesser than anybody else. And it's, um, it's time to understand that. But within that title is uh, just an absolute mass of connected dots across all levels of, of, of awareness if you like from the five senses through to, to, to higher levels of consciousness and then there's this uh, particularly new information which explains how this control system can work in the way it does 
and how humanity's collective mind can be taken over. And uh, it's, um, like I say, it's going to get quite a reaction. Pleasant and unpleasant, but then again, no one said it would be easy. And, and you also have a DVD that you've been uh, uh, promoting on your website that you've done with uh, a number of people. Is that uh, the fall of is that the fall of the republic or something? Fall yeah, America. fall of yeah, America. Western fall. World. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done a few um, DVDs where I've I've been on DVDs with other people, and um, but I'll be I'm speaking in um, in London at the uh, Brixton Academy, which is a, a big theatre, two and a half thousand people in May on May the tenth, and I'll be doing a uh, a DVD version of, of, of that, which will bring in all this information that's in the new book. So um, it's going to be quite a year, but it's great. It's so great because when I look back 20 years ago, and this is kind of a, almost a special time for me because on uh, March the 31st, uh, 1990, um, coming up to exactly 20 years ago, I walked uh, into a psychic's uh, front room because I'd been feeling over a year that there was a presence around me that I didn't understand and I wanted to go and see a psychic to see if she would pick up what was happening I didn't tell her any of this and she did and um, I was told uh, in that room that day or on the third visit there anyway that I was going to go out on a world stage and reveal great secrets which like I said earlier I thought you were having a laugh I, 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 I introduced <laughs> the sport on the BBC mate I mean what are you talking about um, but it's, it's, it's happened and um, in when I look back 20 years uh, at the world and people's awareness and I look at it now it's just I just want to scream with joy because uh, there is such an awakening going on and it's so pleasing to me because 20 years ago I was told about what I now call the truth vibrations uh, this vibrational change that was going to change a human perception and my goodness the truth vibrations are there to see now in, 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 in vastly and so increasingly quickly changing human perception. Now, one thing I, w- I would wonder about is, are there those out there that think that they are uh, purporting the truth but maybe have connected with some avenues that might be deflecting it away from this awakening? Or is that even something to be, even be cognizant, cognizant? I can't even say the word. Yeah, do you ever <laughs> feel like that's happened to you, that someone's trying to steer your uh, your results, your presentation to make it look a little worse, maybe... maybe turn people off to it, you know, like tweak, tweak the reptilian thing or whatever to make people just kind of go, oh, this is all, well... Well, no, rubbish. no, I, I mean, when, w- I have had a, a, a very um, simple philosophy all these years, which is, if I believe it to be true, and, and if it's supported by the evidence and it's supported by the synchronicity of my life, which I've learned to understand because it's happened for 20 years now, if I don't understand it more now, then what have I been doing again? Uh, then I'll put it out there. See, um, if I was saying, uh, as, as some people have, um, well, I'm aware of this, but I'm not going to say it, because what, 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 I went back to our conversation of a few minutes ago, what will people think? Um, then what's the point of that? So when I started coming across this uh, reptilian stuff, uh, not because I sat in a darkened room and thought, I think this is what's going on. I, I come across vast amounts of information all over the world over the last uh, 15 years or maybe a bit less than that with the reptilians um, uh, and um, therefore I, I've, I've spoken about it um, and the more that my life moves on the more clearly it is that this is a fundamental part of understanding what's going on and just because people were going to um, immediately dismiss it or ridicule it which they did when I first came out with it uh, doesn't mean that I'm not going to say it just because of that. And it's interesting that when I uh, put um, reptilian extraterrestrials and words to that effect in a search engine in 1997 when I wrote a book called The Biggest Secret, which, which I talked about this for the first time, there was literally a handful of pages on the web. A very, very small, almost insignificant. You put reptilian, extraterrestrial, or, or, or interdimensional, or <laughs> something like that in now, there's tens and tens of thousands of them. Um, and what it is, uh, I decided uh, amid the great ridicule of 20 years ago, that the worst thing I could do, because I realized by then that we were consciousness and internal consciousness, and this was just one experience. I, 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 I thought to myself, what's the worst I can do here? I can 
completely mess up one lifetime in this reality. That's the worst I can do. Well, okay, I'm up for that. I'll, I'll take that as the worst case scenario. And that's why I, uh, uh, I've gone on through the years saying things that I knew when I said them was going to get ridicule and condemnation and all the rest of it. But if someone doesn't say them and they stay unsaid, then nothing changes. You know, someone's got to uh, say these things, uh, not just for the sake of it, but because they believe them to be right, um, to, so that even the reaction of condemnation and, and, and ridicule has started that information circulating, if you follow me. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. And that's what you're getting back to the statement I made earlier, and that I have definitely found in, say, like some of these false flag events and and that have taken place, I have found that just going out on the Internet and just put, posing a few questions, how it has grown legs, and yeah. it's amazing. Well, I, I, have, I have this saying, you can't unhear something. Um, and, and this is why people that ridicule me mercilessly uh, in the early 1990s are now reading my books, because you can't unhear something. Well, but to, to, to have that effect, which you're talking about there, um, it has to be said. And if you're going to say it in, in, a, in a world that um, has a, a narrow view of reality and possibility, then don't come running to me and saying, look what they're saying about me. Well, listen, you've got a choice. You keep your mouth shut, you'll be fine. Um, but if you open your mouth, then don't start complaining about what people are saying about you because look at the world you're living in. Of course they're going to say that because from their perspective, you are crazy. And... And you, you, you are to be condemned or whatever. Uh, so if, you, if you're going to do it, then you've got to accept the consequences of that, which is, which is you know, some of them can be un, un, unpleasant. But once it's said, it cannot be unsaid. Once it's heard, it cannot be unheard. And if what you're saying has validity, then eventually it will be shown t to be so. And those who heard before and dismissed it will say, hold on a second, didn't that guy say that? Didn't this lady say that? And, and, and suddenly the, the, the world changes. But if you didn't say it to start with, nothing changes. One of the big reasons that people have turned to my books in the last few years is because what was in the earlier books is now happening on the TV news. If, 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 if I hadn't have said that earlier, then there would have been no relevance to, to, to my work at all by what's happening in the world today. Same with many other people. It's not just me. God, there's loads of people doing this. Um, and therefore, we, we need to have that that that. that uh, that, well, initially courage to overcome the fear of doing it, but once you go beyond fear, you don't need courage, because courage is just to overcome fear. And it, to, to say it, to accept the consequences, and think, okay, well, if it has validity, it will be shown eventually to be, be so. If it doesn't have validity, well, I shouldn't be saying it anyway. Well, you know, when it comes down to it, I think one of the things that keeps me going is understanding that uh, there's an end game going on, but... I'm also seeing beyond that. Do you? Oh, I, I, I'm, uh, ironically, very, very uh, confident about the outcome um, of events. Um, the truth vibrations are not coming in for the sake of it. They're coming in to transform this reality from a control system to a state of um, uh, infinitely greater awareness, love, perception, unity, um, understanding that we're all one, all, all, this is what it's doing. And, you know, I, said, I talked earlier about when you are moving from one perception to another, your life seems to fall apart because the old uh, construct that your old vibrational electromagnetic state is creating is, is changing to the new, and in that transition, the old, quote, falls apart. Well, there are collective... Uh, it's a collective version of this going on now, in, in my view. And what we're seeing is the control system appears to be doing things to get more and more control. And on one level, it is. And will seem to be doing so for a while yet. But on another level, because, you know, people think that uh, if you look at it from this level, that's the only way of looking at it. There's multiple levels of uh, observation where the same thing looks very different. From a higher level of perception, I would say that what we're seeing is the breaking down of the old uh, collective energetic electromagnetic construct, which is manifest as what we call the collective human 
experience, the world we live in and experience. And again, it's going to seem like not our lives are falling apart, because we're talking collectively, that the world is falling apart. It's what it's going to seem like. Oh my goodness, the world's falling apart. Look what's happening. What's actually falling apart and going to be falling apart is the um, uh, energetic waveform construct from which this holographic daily experience is manifest. And as it does, the old um, uh, world will collapse and a new one will take its place, which will be the, the, the new world. And not the new world order, which these controlling freaks think they're going to create, but the new world of uh, created from a, a, a higher level of perception and awareness. Um, but in the playing out of this, it's going to seem, A, the world is falling apart, and two, that the control system is getting more and more control, and oh my goodness me, uh, Big Brother's got control of the world. And then at some point, within my lifetime, and I'm 58 in April, um, this whole control system's going to collapse, because the energetic um, construct that's holding the house of cards together is being dismantled by the truth vibrations. And when you, when you have a dam... It can take a long time for the cracks to appear. But once the cracks appear, it can collapse very quickly. And we're moving every day closer uh, and seeing more and more cracks appear in this control system. And the point's coming where it's going to collapse. And then the challenge will be, okay, now we need to take the world forward in a different way. And uh, so I, I think it's um, the world's going to be very different, but it's going to be... A, 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 a much nicer place to live. The control system is not going to control our children's and grandchildren's life for the rest of their time here. It's not. It's going to. It's going to seem so for a few years, and then it's coming down. Wonderful time to be alive. Well, I, I view control as a disease or the disease, and uh, and I'm as far as. Your website, would you like to kind of get in what you had your intent when you re redesigned it and and uh, what a uh, great place to connect with a lot of different information? Well, it, 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 it's kind of synchronistic again because um, this this new book, at, like I say, is at the printers now. will be out in a few weeks. It's, it's, it's a, a, a new stage of my life um, that this begins. And um, it, we've been working to redesign the website for ages, but it just happened to drop in the same period that it, that, that it happened. Um, it's, it's one heck of a lot more um, easy to navigate now and access the information. What happened with the old one is that it started in a small way a long time ago and then gradually kind of bit... You know, we, we've got an airport in London called Heathrow, and um, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess because it started out in the early days of aviation um, as, as a small airport, and then they built bits on it and built bits on it and built bits on it. It's a total mess. Everyone's been through Heathrow. It's a nightmare. Uh, 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 and then you get the other airports where they start with a blank sheet of land, and they design the airport in the best, most effective way, and, and that's what we've done with this website now. So um, it's going to be much easier for people to go there and, uh, and get what they want. Might I suggest, I noticed that you had for your subscription rate, it was done in pounds, and there's some of us that don't quite know that conversion rate. <laughs> All right. That's about, uh, what's that, about $4 now, I suppose, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But growing. So, I'll, look, I'll, I'll get the webmaster to look at that. It's a good point, yeah. And, and as far as, what are you offering in that subscription? Oh, well, um, I write a newsletter every week, which is um, uh, a uh, researched article either on the events of that week or on some aspect of this whole multiple level uh, subject uh, uh, web of subjects. And um, uh, I do that. I do that every week. And th th there's other things as well. But what I, what I concentrate on, I let, I let all the other people deal with that. I'm not, I'm not interested in the logistics. I'm not interested in, in all that stuff. I leave that to the webmaster to get on with it. My interest and my focus is gathering information and communicating it. And, um, I don't really go beyond that. Well, and you've done an excellent job at it. Uh, yeah, I say, you know, the fr your real friends are the ones that tell you the truth, and you're certainly a friend to all of us by being brave enough to, to tell your truths. 
Well, the one, well, the one thing I, the one thing I will say, I, I'm not claiming that everything I say is right because you're trying to um, uncover something that doesn't want to be uncovered across a gra the vast range of subjects. But uh, what I, what I can say, in all honesty, that when I say it, I believe it to be true. Well, the number one the truth that you you put into my brain over the years is, is just the title of your one book, where it's uh, "Infinite Love is the Only Truth." Everything else is illusion. I don't know how many times that is just synchronously returned at just the perfect moment. And uh, I guess, you know, if I may, I, I'd like to, inside, in one, uh, chapter 5, you open off with a quote from Oscar Wilde. And it really, it, this, this is my experience today in speaking with you, is that on an occasion of this kind, it becomes more than a moral duty to speak one's mind. It becomes a pleasure. It's certainly been a pleasure to speak with you today, David. Well, thanks very much. It's very kind, and uh, you know we're we're all, we're all part of this. You know, and you're part of this. Uh, everyone who's communicating this information is part of this. You know, we're a vast interconnected uh, uh, team, if you like, uh, all over the world. And ev anyone joins the team when they decide I'm gonna I'm gonna speak my truth and um, I'm gonna open my mind to to other possibilities. And as, as we do that, then more and more people uh, change not just the vibration of themselves, they change the vibration of the planet. And the control system absolutely depends on a low vibrational environment because the, the control system, uh, the consciousness behind the control system is low vibrational because of it, it needs to control, it wants to control, therefore it's in a low vibrational state. The two go together. So the more that we, um, we, we, we open ourselves and, 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 and open our own vibrational state, the more the control system will be losing its power and uh, will eventually come down and it's coming down. Funnily enough, it's in the process of coming down now. It just doesn't look like it. Well, it, I uh, really have to thank you very much for uh, your patience and then also just <laughs> coming on our <laughs> while we get this sound thing straightened out. But I, I don't you understand know, technology. I, I wish you all the best <laughs> for that one. <laughs> So we're we're learning it. <laughs> high level IT professional calls them confusers. F U S, -S E R confusers. And certainly, it was like that today. Yeah, good one. And uh, but I I really want to thank you for uh, enlightening our our audience. And I hope that we can do this again sometime. Yeah, that'd be a pleasure. And Thanks very much indeed. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, you Dave. Know, what? what? Well, Did you we, have we can cut this off any time that we that we want. But but for. Uh, for a, a secondary blurb, I wonder, um, uh, David, I don't know if you've seen Melody's huge list <coughs> of guests of, uh, from all different aspects, nutrition, science, right. people, uh, you know, John Lear, you know, really interesting things coming about, you know, aliens and that, some of it crossovers into your work, and a lot of the time, um, I feel like, like what you just said about opening yourself up by vibrationally, that's what happens uh, when we're on the air with these people, you know, they're real people and we're talking with them. And, you know, Melody really draws them out to just, you know, conversationally start start going. And, and yet a lot of their information contradicts. And as we as we go off to do some more interviews, and, and you know, there's a, certainly a full slate of more more people discussing it, <clears throat> what, what, as a media consultant to this project, what would you say uh, are, are the kind of intents to hold while we're, while we're deciphering you know, lest we be confused of just being all completely positive, um, you know, what, what is the way to, to take a look at what people are saying and, and really decipher it for the truth? Well, all you, all you can do is, um, on an intellectual level, is look at the evidence, and even more important, on an intuitive level, feel it. You know, um, someone once said to me years ago, um, who was an insider, he said, look, you've quoted a disinformer in your book. I said, all right. He said, yeah, but you've only quoted him on the bit that's true. How do you do that? <laughs> and, uh, and it, it's, it's very simple. The part, that part that I quoted felt right to me. Other things the guy said did not. Uh, and this intuition, which we all have, we all have, but mind overwhelms it um, and contradicts it. Because uh, the mind... Um, doesn't want intuition ruling the perception it wants to do it itself um, but this intuition is just it and, and this is the intuitive level that they can't manipulate because it's outside of their vibrational box so someone can look at you in the face and can smile in the right places tell you what you want to hear just like used car salesmen do 
um, and and they can manipulate you that way because oh he's a nice chap um, and if you feel them or feel information or feel a situation rather than think it then you can, you'll say yeah he seemed okay but there's just something not right there I, I did feel good about that guy and in this way you, you can um, reduce the number of times you get manipulated and, and scammed well one of the other things that I kind of feel is important to eat, sometimes even put out somebody that you may not agree with in any any fashion or you might feel as putting out disinfo because who am I to judge what the public should hear in the respect that you know they need to hear it so they can decipher whether there it is their truth or not yeah Does I that mean makes sense well well yeah I mean what I do is put out information personally I'm not attached to how it's received, not least because it's none of my business. You know, if, I, if I'm attached to um, uh, how people receive, for instance, what I say, then what I'm saying is, you must believe me. And how dare you not believe me? Um, <laughs> how, how people react to it is their right, their choice. And, and, and that applies to everybody. Um, and let people hear all versions, and then they can decide their own truth rather yeah, than take I mean, someone else's truth off the, off the shelf, off the peg. Right. I mean, they should all, they should all go out there and, uh, and, and embrace the fact that looking for what, other, what, uh, what else corroborates it or, uh, you know, shoots it down. But, you know, I, I really don't want to, if I'm questing for truth, you know, I've got to look, turn over a lot of stones to find what... But you also have to choose who you, whom you interview. And well, you yeah. You and I discuss... You know, do we think this person, you know, I mean, their intent seems honest, but are they perhaps being managed, you mm. know, well, well, there's a lot of managed stuff in this arena, and, and of course, why wouldn't there be? You know, when you, when you are um, trying to put out information that is challenging the control system, exposing the control system, um, and that's what I, I, I'm doing. I'm not fighting the control system. I don't, I don't want to fight anybody. You, what you fight, you become. Um, and uh, this is why so many, uh, well, every kind of revolution that's brought about by violence creates a, a control system uh, after the revolution that is pretty much like the one before, because the same mentality that was before is now still there, but it's just called a different name. Um, so um, I, I'm just putting information uh, um, out there, and uh, like I say, how it's received is completely up to, to the people um, receiving it. And... Uh, if um, if it has validity, then people it, that that information and that person will eventually become uh, more and more um, uh, accepted as someone who's speaking some kind of truth. Uh, if it's not got validity, then eventually um, people will be um, be seen to be manipulating and, and and all the rest of it. But in the uh, in the uh, the case of the uh, the control and the manipulation of this arena. Of course, when you're dealing with something that's putting out information that you don't want people to know, you are going to place people and organizations within that arena that are going to deflect, divert, suppress, and target those within the arena who are putting out stuff that you don't want people to hear. So it is um, a minefield, or 